but you click on that and you find that there's simply no study done whatsoever. Please stick to your normal way of doing videos. I don't think that, you know, getting into data is too good of an idea. I mean, literally like you read a claim in a paper and then couldn't find the sources for the claim when the sources were cited literally directly after the claim. This is a little bit worrying. Hey, what is going on guys? So Vegan Deterioration has recently made a video that is quite different from her other videos in that she decides to read actual data. And I say this is quite different because normally, you know, when you're watching one of her videos, it's just her, you know, looking at the appearance of somebody and, you know, just making these little judgments based on different lighting and, and other things or just overanalyzing the concept of aging, just things like that. So we're gonna see just why she should stick to that as opposed to read studies and more. Oh, and before we go on, vegan deterioration. If you're watching, I've been begging for you to do a video on me for a long time now. I don't know why you haven't. Um, my deterioration is pretty clear, you know? I think it's good content for you to uh, to um, cover. So, you know, if you see this, please, please do a video on me. Let's take a look at this absolute genius. This is the paper that says the vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life. Uh, the essay that the vegans quote over and over, position paper of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics on vegan and vegetarian diets. It's just an essay, basically. And when you read this paper, you scroll down to the very last page, you will see that this paper was, they wrote it in their own paper. This paper is in effect until December 31st, 2021. I intentionally did not share my opinions or any thoughts on that just to see, you know, what would happen. And of course, you literally can read one line from the paper they've been ramming down your throat for years and they will want to argue you for just looking at a line in the paper instead of contacting the authors of that paper that they've been trying to shove down your throat. You know, today's date is February the 8th, 2022. The position paper of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says that this position paper is in effect until December 31st, 2021. Based on the fact that it's February 8th, 2022, and based on the exact wording in this paper, this paper is now currently, maybe it's temporary, I don't know, but at least currently right now, the paper is out of effect. All right, guys. So vegan deterioration has made a life-changing discovery here. That life-changing discovery is that position papers and statements are based on the most modern research and that as time goes on, research that was once considered more modern becomes less modern, causing the original writers of a position paper to feel the need to update their position paper so that the paper properly reflects the most or more modern evidence. So let's break this down, guys. When time happens, evidence that was once considered modern becomes less modern. And then because of this phenomenon we call time, researchers who make position statement papers decide to update their papers with more modern research to further back their position. And if we scroll to the bottom of the position statement paper from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, where they made the whole statement that the paper is going to be in effect until December 31st, 2021, we'll see that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics position on vegetarian diets was adopted by the House of Delegates leadership team on October 18th, 1987, and then was reaffirmed on September 12th, 1992, and then September 6, 1996, and then June 22, 2000, and then June 11, 2006, and then March 19, 2012. So it is very likely that just like in the past, the paper will just be reaffirmed shortly, given it has happened five times. It's almost like this is how position papers work. If we go to eatrightpro.com, which is the website for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, while referring to position papers practice papers and consensus reports, they say the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is dedicated to supporting evidence-based practice and recommends that nutrition and dietetics practitioners utilize evidence-based principles and current scientific evidence within their practice. Academy position papers, practice papers, and consensus reports 
are designed to inform Academy members of the latest research on specific topics in the field of nutrition. Notice words like latest research and current scientific evidence. Who knew that position papers were designed to be based on the most modern scientific evidence? I wonder if any other associations function in the same way when it comes to position statements. If we look at the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners, when talking about position statements, they say, the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners, or the NAP NAP, has position statements on a variety of topics and issues regarding advanced nursing practice in children's health. Our position statements are created through a rigorous process, beginning with the approval of the pursuit of a position, the actual development of each position, and ending with each statement's publication in our professional journal, the Journal of Pediatric Healthcare. Our position statements are regularly reviewed to ensure they meet evolving standards and best practices. All regular position statements expire automatically five years after publication unless reaffirmed, revised, or retired at, or before that time. Priority position statements have a three-year lifespan. Wow, guys, so I'm really just mind-blown here. I had no idea that position statements are updated. So let's look at the title that Vegan Deterioration gave this video. She titled it, veganism has expired and responds. So let's make a couple things clear here. The position paper from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is not veganism. It's a position paper on vegetarian and vegan diets. A position paper needing to be updated with new evidence every couple years, as position papers tend to be, is not indicative of veganism expiring. This is just how position papers work. Also, just because the authors of position papers seek to update research used to back their position statements does not mean that all the papers initially cited to support their position are no longer reliable. It's not like, oh dude, as of December 31st, 2021, all the individual papers cited in the position statement are now useless and tell us nothing. And I think that's a, I think that's really good because the most disturbing thing to me in this paper is where they say the low DHA status, the effect of the low DHA status in vegan children is unknown. You willingly admit in your paper that there's low amounts of a certain nutrient in vegan children and you say the effect of that is unknown right that alone is suspicious but then they follow up behind that in the paper if you vegans don't believe me go to the paper and look for yourself but they follow up behind that saying however just you know just try to make it seem like it doesn't really matter and there's you know it doesn't matter if they have low dha um they follow it up by saying vegan children don't appear to have any cognitive um deficits or something compared to omnivores or something like that they say the vegan children don't appear to have cognitive and intelligence problems now you might say see so what they have low dha that means you know it doesn't really matter what their dha is but when you look at the references for that sentence that says that the the vegan kids don't appear to have any cognitive differences you would expect to click on a a number you know how they have the little numbers that'll lead you to the the book or the study or whatever you click on those numbers, you expect to see, oh, they tested vegan children's cognition versus omnivore and vegetarian kids' cognition, and then even though they had low DHA, everything was all good and all the same. That's what you expect to see, right? But you click on that, and you find that there's simply no study done whatsoever. You click on those numbers, you expect to see, oh, they tested vegan children's cognition versus omnivore and vegetarian kids' cognition, and then even though they had low DHA, everything was all good and all the same. That's what you expect to see, right? But you click on that, and you find that there's simply no study done whatsoever. But you click on that and you find that there's simply no study done whatsoever. So this part is a little bit confusing. Maybe uh, vegan deterioration doesn't know how to click on uh, numbers or you know hover her mouse over numbers. <laughs> place our index finger on the left side of the mouse and our middle finger on the right side of the mouse. We use our index finger to left click. Make sure to hold the mouse tightly while clicking. This will prevent you from accidentally clicking on the wrong thing. And this is also the button that we use most often. But you click on that and you find that there is simply no study done whatsoever. We use our index finger to left click. Make sure to hold the mouse tightly while clicking. If you go to the citation numbers at the end of the specific claim in the position statement that says, yet vegetarian and vegan children do not appear to experience impairment in visual or mental development, and vegetarian and vegan adults experience reduced risk for cardiovascular disease. You will see those numbers and they will cite two specific studies. One of them takes us to a paper titled DHA status of vegetarians, where we can find the claim vegetarian and vegan children do not appear to experience impairment in visual or mental development, fully substantiated. And the third citation leads us to the Adventist Health Study 2, 
which substantiates the claim that vegan adults experience reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. And if you want to see me cover that study, just go check out my video on Mike Isriatel. But yeah, I'm not really sure why she makes the claim that when you go to the numbers after the claim that she has a problem with about vegan children, that there's no study that's being cited to. I mean, there is. There's literally three. But you click on that and you find that there's simply no study done whatsoever. But we use our index finger to left click. Make sure to hold the mouse no tightly while clicking. Whatsoever. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Vegan deterioration. If you're watching, once again, please, I'm begging for you to do a video on me. And also, please stick to your normal way of doing videos. I don't think that you know, getting into data is too good of an idea. I mean, literally like you read a claim in a paper and then couldn't find the sources for the claim when the sources were cited literally directly after the claim. This is a little bit worrying. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. W who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes, dude. Even vegans don't get your weird, 